Hey friends, today we are going to spend some time back up here in the new woodland garden uh, right here at the entrance to the nursery and along our driveway. We're going to add some more shade loving one shade loving shrub tree, the black laced elderberry from Proven Winners, and then we're going to add two different sets of hostas. These are gorgeous. Again, from Proven Winners, they are part of their Shadowland series. They are beautiful. So um, if you remember, we were here hmm, two weeks ago, maybe, and we planted this woodland garden. So I'm also give you an update on how some things are doing and show you, just kind of walk you through this whole situation and tell you what we need to do and then get these beautiful plants in the ground so that they can get established and get nice and happy. Um, spring has sprung here in North Carolina, absolutely for sure. I'm standing here right against the fence, kind of looking back up on the flower bed. This is where we have the beautiful, uh, very pale yellow camellia. This is a japonica and you can see that it has a gorgeous flower on it. It is more on the um, finished side. This is a lemon glow. Lemon glow, nice, soft, pale, creamy yellow. And again, you can see it's kind of, it's kind of this particular one is almost done, but we do have um, some other buds down there. So that is really fun for sure. So those are coming along and um, we've got... Brenna, very happy back there. Down here on the front of the bed, you will see that I have got some bulbs planted. These were planted last year. I have some beautiful, cute little snowdrops right here, and they are blooming for the second year, the second spring being in here. Pretty happy with them. So these galanthus bulbs, snowdrops, are doing quite nicely, even after they've been run over by the bobcat a few times. And everything else is doing really nice. Um, we still have yet to come in here and lay down the actual finished drip tube irrigation. You can see that brown tube sticking up. We will connect to that and then run drip irrigation to this whole flower bed. We really need to do that and kind of move with purpose on that. It has been so warm here in North Carolina. We're getting rain about once a week, maybe for a day or two. But because this does um, is on a slope and we've got all these mature trees around here, the ground does stay pretty dry. So with these new plants, it's really important that I get consistent water on them. And then once I lay that irrigation down, then we can come back and do a nice thick layer of our compost pine bark fines mulch. And that will help retain moisture really, really well. So once we get these plants in the ground, then that is definitely going to be, um, as far as I'm concerned, a high priority in getting those done. So let's talk about where we're going to put these plants. I have this beautiful little spot. You can see the white pots right there between a camellia over here and then an azalea back behind that tree. So I had a nice little empty spot and I was like, well, this will just be perfect for this black laced elderberry. This elderberry is definitely going to be a test for me because it is from only up to a zone seven. I am a 7B um, and our friends over there at Spring Meadow, which is the home of the uh, Proven Winners Color Choice Shrubs, they sent it to me in the fall. So this will be really nice to be able to test out and see how it does. You can see it already has beautiful new foliage on it. It overwintered all winter outside on the shrub lot and it has flushed back out. So we're going to get this as far back as I possibly can up against the fence because I need it to be in deep shade. For me, that is absolutely imperative. And then in front of that, I'm going to plant three hostas, roughly, depending on tree roots, you can see where I have them placed. These are all going to be the same kind of hosta. This is relatively um, new on the market. Actually, you know what, y'all? I just saw this. I think I have two different kinds. I sure do. So we're going to switch our switch it around just a little bit. Um, I have Miss America, who is obviously a beautiful variegated, nice dark green on the outside, creamy white centers, about 19 inches tall. And then if you flip the tag over for your perennials, it'll tell you up here, um, 19 inches tall, and it's going to be nice and wide. 
And so it's going to be medium green, heart-shaped leaves, white centers, light green streaking. And it's going to have white flowers and a lavender pattern on them. So actually, I am going to move this around because I have Miss America here. I have two of the Hope Springs Eternal, which is really going to be basically the opposite as far as the coloring on the Miss America. So this is going to have a green center with creamy white margins and it's going to be beautiful ruffled edges. So much fun and it's going to be a little bit taller, 22 inches. So that'll make a lot of sense by having the Hope Springs Eternal on the outside and then I'll move Miss America right here. Work with what you got, people. And this is going to be not quite as wide, but that's all right. Again, those heart-shaped blue leaves, crisp, creamy white edges, near white flowers. going to be really fun. I love hostas. Now, if you are um, in an area of the country that, like I am, that is really like hot and humid even at night, you will probably find that your hostas are not going to grow um, as vigorous and as large as they possibly can. It's just because our nights do not cool off and we have such sticky nights and they just don't grow as well because the plants don't have time to recover. You go an hour and a half up the road to the Blue Ridge Mountains, Boone, Blowing Rock, some of my favorite places on the planet to go, that you could have the exact same hosta and they are ginormous and growing in full sun. That does not work here. So whereas like my panicle hydrangeas here will outgrow the specs, my hostas are on the smaller side. I am going to amend these holes really well with my land and sea compost, get it nice and rich and organic. And then when we lay down the irrigation, I will make sure that these get wrapped really well and so that they get lots of good consistent moisture. So let's walk down here and I wanna show you the um, other one that we are going to plant as we walk through the woods here. Now, these plants are huge and i have three of them so we'll just back up here for a second so it's this, all of these are the same i promise this is diamond lake and they are you can see a little bit of a ribbon towards the back again where i have camellias in the back and azaleas um, all intermingled in here and they're going to kind of wisp their way through there here we have Diamond Lake, and you can see how much this baby has popped out already. A couple of reasons for that. One, in the fall, my mom did move these up to a three gallon container where they arrived to me from um, our friends at Walter's Gardens in a one gallon. She moved them up to a three gallon and then so they've got more room for the roots to grow and also hers are more in dappled sun underneath her pine trees where the one gallons that i have um, at my house were in deep deep shade so just shows you the difference but you can see diamond lake it's going to be a big one so diamond lake is going to be only about 17 inches tall but it's going to be about 45 inches wide, a large blue hosta. When you have hostas that are a deep, like what we call a blue hosta or really, really dark green, that means for me, they need a lot more shade. My lighter, more lime chartreuse hostas can handle more sun. So like the classic summon substance is a beautiful, huge hosta, big, huge leaves on it, but it's a very, very bright, bright green. It can actually handle some, a couple of hours more of my sun than say the dark blue. So that's just an idea. Um, when you're placing your hostas and if you have a bed like I do here, where we have various levels of, sh of sun and shade, the darker ones, deep shade, the lighter ones can handle more sun. So I have my power planter auger with the three gallon attachment. I'm going to get that hooked up. We're going to pray that we don't hit any big, huge roots here. And um, if we do, we'll just pivot and we'll find a new little location for these beautiful hostas and that elderberry. And um, yeah, we're going to get them in the ground use my biotone and I am going to supplement with the land and sea compost because this soil is pretty terrible and these plants love really rich organic soil. So Miss B and I are going to get at it and we are going to plant some plants, aren't we B? You ready? Okay, we're going to go for it.
All right, so I got the black lace elderberry in the ground and I got the first three hostas in the ground. Not gonna lie, it is easier when we have the bobcat with the hydraulics digging these holes. But my power planter auger uh, was faithful and trusty as it always is and we got the holes dug. Now, you will notice that the uh, hosta that was supposed to go right here yeah, nope, didn't happen. It got moved on the other side. So we kept that semi very loose triangle shape. They are not evenly spaced from one another. I don't want them to be. This is a woodland garden. I want it balanced, um, but I don't want it to be matchy matchy and exactly X feet apart from each other because nothing in nature is exactly X feet apart from each other as you can tell from these trees. I want a little bit of whimsy and quote randomness to it, but yet the bed still be balanced. So we got the two hope springs eternal are still on the outside the miss america is on the inside and then black lace elderberry is right behind me we are open today this is the first wednesday that the nursery is open so if you see cars going back and forth and lots of activity that is just because the nursery is open uh, miss b is staying here with me and doing really well she is still getting used to uh, traffic being back here because of course we've been you know on winter break and so she has gotten used to just having the house and the nursery to herself uh so she's trying to figure out why it's okay that all these cars keep coming in and out but she is doing really good and she is being a sweet girl and uh very hospitable just keep in mind when you if you come to the nursery um you may feel like you know brenna uh Brenda doesn't know you. She doesn't understand social media and TVs and uh, she is a German Shepherd and she is very protective of her people, especially me. So if you come visit the nursery and she is here, we just ask that you uh, be very respectful of her space until she is warmed up to you and wants to come see you. And if she does it, then she does it. Um, but now what we're gonna do is move on and get the three diamond lakes in the ground. Hopefully they'll go a little bit easier uh, and smoothly, but we're making progress, people. Bit by bit, right? We're gonna get it done. Good girl. my friends so this morning's project is complete we have that beautiful black lace elderberry planted in here along with actually three different varieties of hostas i thought i was only getting two but i had three in here and um cannot wait to see how they grow and develop i know right now because we've talked about this before that you may be looking at this bed and going there's a lot of sun in that flower bed jenny well there is but it's also the beginning of march we are underneath big nice size oak trees with a really high canopy and they are going to flush out leaves really soon it is interesting that we have have more shade now than when we actually even planted it because um, of just the way that the sun is moving and so forth. Once these leaves flush out, this will definitely be a shade garden. But in order for me to have these plants in this space, irrigation is actual, I mean, like, is very imperative. I have to have irrigation. And 
I have some Linton roses right off here to the side that are looking very sad and wilted because they have gotten dried out. I went ahead and added a bag of Landon C around that. So uh, Jerry and I are going to be getting on this really soon. Um, I would like within the next week that this bed will be buttoned up. So we have irrigation in here and then the mulch compost blend is down. That way everybody can really start getting good drinks of water and getting nice and established before the true heat of the summer hits. So that's pretty much it for today. I will probably go grab a couple of buckets of water and get everybody watered in. We are supposed to get some rain later on and then our temperatures are cooling down. So that certainly helps the stress on the plants. But this fun woodland garden continues and we will keep you updated. As always, thanks so much for joining with Creekside. Y'all have a fantastic day and we will see you in the next video. Bye friends.